Now, professional footballers rarely shy away from the spotlight. But one player is quite happy to preserve his anonymity. The secret footballer writes freely on the game in an anonymous newspaper column and in a new book, sparking a guessing game online about his identity. Well, the secret footballer agreed to do his first ever television interview with us on the condition we kept his identity under wraps and his voice distorted. And even we don't know it, but we have received assurances that he is indeed a professional player but have been unable to verify that for ourselves. Normally we only give anonym anonymity to except in exceptional circumstances like that of a victim or a whistleblower. So I began by asking him, which are you? <laughs> uh, get off the fence. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, get, I, I, I could be either, I guess. I don't really look at it in those terms. Uh, I just think that there is uh, a lot to say about football. Um, which hasn't been said, which needs a certain degree of anonymity to it. Are, are you afraid of the fans on the terraces or, you, or your mates in the, in, in the changing room, in the dressing room? No, neither, neither really. I, it's more um, to get away from the bias of, of, of being connected with a team or being a, being a name. And the things that I'm talking about in, in the books and in the articles really um, are, are given... People are willing to open their mind to what I'm, to what I'm saying or what I'm writing. Um, you don't like the way people like us in the media uh, talk about... Um, intellectual activity in, the, in, in football. You see, you take cricket or rugby, there are loads of people who have been to university, got really good degrees in both those sports. It's a very widespread fact that people can be educated. But in football, uh, it, it, getting a degree is a pretty rare activity. We are made up of essentially um, a lot of kids on, on, on council estates who are taken into uh, big clubs uh, at very young ages, there's, there's uh, kids going in now at 9 and 10. Well, I've, I've looked at some of the academies, um, footballing academies, especially Premier Division clubs, and they don't offer the opportunity really to take A-levels and play football. I, I completely agree with you, John, um, wholeheartedly, and it is something that needs to look at. There isn't enough that's going on in that respect at the moment, and that is an area which, um, which I, I would like to... Um, write more about and bring to people's attentions and perhaps get more involved in myself. There's certainly so much more that we can do and I, I completely agree. We do owe it to these kids. If we're going to take them at a young age um, and remove their education essentially, um, we, we do owe it to them. But you know something, secret footballer, I think you could have told us more about money because money plays an absolutely massive part in football and a lot of people reckon that the money now is on such a scale for Premier Division clubs in particular, and it'll get bigger after this BT deal, that, that it's, it's beyond uh, reasonableness. It's, it's absurd. I mean, nobody is worth 200,000 a week, um, whether it's for football or banking. And frankly, um, you, you seem to see it as completely acceptable. Um, well, I think the, the, there might be a fixation on this word um, worth. I think it's market forces, and, and the market dictates what the players can be paid. Um, and the deal that BT have just signed, £900 million for three years for the Champions League, well, clearly the money is there then, isn't it? Um, well, as you're, as you're, as you're anonymous sure. and, and you've confessed that, uh, that you've been at some point in your career uh, traded for quite a few million, um, you could tell us what your best earning period was. I mean, not, not the year, but how much you were paid, roughly. Yeah, well, many tens of thousands of pounds. Um, a week. Um, a week, yeah. And, uh, but, that, but, but I don't equate money with... Um, with happiness, and I don't think that anybody should, although I understand that it might be a little difficult for me to sort of force that impression upon people. It can certainly buy you a lot of things, and happiness for in short bursts. But um, so far as being content, because you have a lot of money, I simply don't buy into that, I'm afraid. And when you retire, will you, um, you know, reveal yourself and tell us who you are and uh, throw off your, your, your dark satanic disguise <laughs> satanic uh, <laughs> i'm sure i will john for you i'm sure i will somewhere down the line